Hello friends and welcome to Limitless Life. I am your host, my name is Larry Hutton and I have been preaching the gospel for many years and it just gets gooder and gooder. You'll have to pardon the uh, South Florida country boy language, <laughs> gooder and gooder. I'm telling you, when I found out Jesus is not religion, that he's really alive and real and uh, he's a savior, he's a healer, he's a financier, he's a peace giver and a wisdom giver and and, and it's, it's more than just going to church and, and obeying some laws. Jesus is a real being. He wants to live in you. He wants to live through you. He wants you to have a wonderful, happy, fulfilled, blessed life. And that's what I'm living now for a number of years, ever since I started learning about the real Jesus. The real Jesus. There, there's a lot of stuff that, that is said about Christianity and, and Jesus that just has no power behind it, no reality to it. It's just talk, and, and it's time for you and I as Christians, as children of God, to stand up and act like who we are. Amen. Act like who we who are, are. Who are we? Well, Christian. Christ-like. We're supposed to be like Jesus. He went everywhere when he was on the earth and healed people, delivered people, forgave people of sin, uh, gave finances to people. He blessed people everywhere he went. That should be what you and I do. Just like Matthew says, let our light so shine before men that they see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. We have a good God. We have a good Jesus. And He wants to be good to you and me. And then He wants His goodness to flow through us to others. Let other people know how good He is. Man, I'll tell you, I just, I, I'm excited. I came in the TV studio and sat down and got in front of the camera. And all of a sudden, I see you. I see people. It's like I don't even see the camera. I don't even, it's like, man, okay, here we are. We're going to fellowship. But let's be real with one another. Let's talk stuff that's relevant relevant for our lives. Your health is relevant. Your finances are relevant. Your peace, your peace of mind, your mental state is relevant to your life on earth. And you can't let your light shine before men if your light has been put under a bushel or you've let it go out. So we're, we, we, we just get, I like getting down to where the rubber meets the road, man, on these programs because it's so helpful. I'm, and I, I just want to thank those of you that have been sending in messages and emails, or I guess there's been some that have been calling our toll-free number 1-888-887-WORD, 1-888-887-WORD. Just call the toll-free number and just say, you know, let, let us know what we've done for you. Some of you have just been saying, just please tell Brother Larry that uh, his messages have done this for me, changed this, and if you have a testimony, give him a testimony. They'll write it down and get it to me. Uh, I'll make sure that I read everything. And, and of course, when you, when you support us financially or you send in a prayer request or you send in a praise report, we pray for you. And that's not just a cliche. We really do. Uh, we pray the word of you, and the word doesn't return void. So we'll stand with you. So thank you. Thank you for letting us know that this messages have been a help to you, and thank you for those of you that are partners with us, your unselfish uh, uh, sacrifices of giving money to us to help us reach more people. It just it, uh, it goes without. It's, it's hard to put into words how much we're thankful, but I'm, I know that there's rewards being laid up in heaven for you, and so you'll be blessed for that. Well, let's get back into our series. We started a series over five months ago now, and uh, this is going to be our 22nd week. In fact, this is my 106th lesson, so I've already had 105 lessons prior to this. And it's a three-part series. I've divided it into three parts, part A, part B, and part C. Part A... I call this, since, since I said ABC, I call this the ABCs of true Christianity because A, part A, the first part of the series is, who are you? And when we say, who are you? In other words, what has God made you? Who, when, he, when you got in Christ, in other words, you accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, you got in Christ, then who are you? Who, who did God make you? And then the B part, the second part of the series, part B, is what God uh, has given you. In other words, what do you already have as being a child of God? What do you already have? So many people don't know most of what they have. 
And then part three, the part C of this series is uh, what can you do because of who you are, because of what you have. Now, what can you do? Um, what has God called you to do? And by answering part A and part B of the series, you'll get to part C and you'll even answer the question, what am I here for? Why, why am I on the earth? What, what, what is my purpose in life? You'll have those answers when you answer the part A and part B of the series. In fact, I say ABCs, the uh, ABCs of true Christianity. When you know these ABCs, that's why we're in our 106th lesson now and we're going to keep going, is because when you understand these things, I'm telling you, you'll know the, you'll know the DEFs right through the uh, XYZs. I mean, it, it'll just thrust your life into such an awesome state of existence that you'll think, man, I am living the dream. I feel like that all the time. I'm living the dream. When, when all hell is breaking loose all around me in the government and in the earth and on the planet and terrorists and rioters and, and viruses and all of this stuff is vague, it's like I walk right through that. And this is what the 23rd Psalm says. Do we believe the Bible or not? So the 23rd Psalm, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. And that's the way I'm living. I just, I don't fear anything. I don't fear anyone. I don't get stressed out about things. I don't get uptight. Or just, I'm, I'm living in the joy of the Lord that is my strength. I'm living in the peace of the Lord Jesus. He is my peace, Ephesians 2 says. I, I'm telling you, do I get attacked? I get attacked just like everybody else, but I can walk through the valley of the shadow of death, not be defeated in or not get depressed and discouraged and worried and upset and uptight and all that in the valley. No, bless God, I just walk right through the valley and I fear no evil because God's with me and He protects me. And he's, in fact, it goes on in Psalm 23 and says He even sets up a table for me so I can sit down and have dinner while my enemies are raging. Yeah, in other words, just have a good, good old meal with the Lord. Have fun with the Lord. <laughs> I'll tell you, I get excited about this kind of life because I'm living what I preach. I preach what I live, but I'm living what I preach. So these aren't just words to me, man. These, this is reality. This is do we really believe? Do we really trust God? You know, in 2 Corinthians 13, 5, the Apostle Paul said, examine yourselves to see if you're really believing. Examine yourself. Why would he tell people to do that? Because a lot of people were not trusting God, were not believing God, were not using their faith, uh, especially when the times got tough. And so uh, we've, got to, we've got to believe God. You know, I have a, a definition of faith, you know, a definition of believing God, a definition uh, of um, putting your reliance upon Jesus. My definition of faith is um, in essence, it's a uh, belief in God, His Word, and His ways that persuades us to believe, say, and do everything God says, even in the midst of contradictory circumstances. So, so it doesn't matter what it looks like, doesn't matter what it feels like, doesn't matter what's going on, I'm still going to act like the Word of God is true, and I'm going to speak it out even when it doesn't look like it's working because I'm persuaded I'm fully persuaded. That's the way Abraham was, and he was an example of a, a man that walked by faith and pleased God. So let's get back into our series here. The, the first six weeks of this series, uh, we covered 23 things that God has made you. The last 15 weeks, we have been covering part B of this series, which is what God has given you. And our foundation text has been 1 John 4, 17, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness, confidence in the day of judgment, because as He is, here's what gives you the confidence. As He is, as Jesus is, so are we in this world. Right now, the way Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father is the way you and I are supposed to be, act, talk in this world. In the age and time we're living in right now, while we exist on planet Earth, we should be acting like Jesus. 1 John 2, 6, we're to walk even as He walked. Wow. So I'm going to remind you, first of all, of what God has already made you. Number one, He has made you an eternal being. You are a spirit, an eternal being. You've been created in God's image and God's likeness. Uh, in fact, God created you in a God class of being right below Him. 
That was his idea. He's the one that did it. Number two, God has made you his very own son or daughter. You're a child of the Most High God, the Almighty God. You, you're part of the immediate family. Number three, God has made you his servant. So not only are you a son in position, but you're a servant in your purpose of life. You serve Jesus to the world. Number four, God has made you his friend. And we found out that is a very, very close, dear friend, like a BFF, right? Number five, God, by the way, if you're just joining us and I'm going over these 23 things and then I'll be going over all the things that God's already given you that we've covered. When I go over these things, you just need to know we have covered so many scriptures that substantiate each one of these points. And so we're not just saying that God has made you this and God's given you this. We're showing you what God said in the Bible to show you, okay, this is truth. Remember John 17, 17, Jesus said his word, God's word is truth. So there's a lot of facts and a lot of realities out there that are not truth. They may be true from a standpoint in the natural realm that they exist, but they're not truth in that they're not eternal. They're subject to change. God's word is never subject to change. Uh, number five, God has made you an heir of his. You are an heir of God, a joint heir with Jesus. Number six, God has made you righteous with his righteousness. Number seven, God has made you a chosen one. He handpicked you, uh, made you part of the, you're not part of a B or C team, you're part of the A team. And he says you're the best in your kind and the best, the best of your kind and the best in your class. And number eight, God has made you his representative. You are an ambassador for Jesus, part of God's government. That's pretty cool. Number nine, you are an anointed one. God made you this. He made you an anointed one just like he did Jesus. Think about that. God made you an anointed one just like Jesus. And we went to all the scriptures, talked about that. Number 10, God has made you a love being. We'll be talking more about that when we get into what you can do because of who you are, what you have, what you can actually do. We'll be talking about that God has made you love. That's why you can love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. They couldn't do that under the old covenant. They, they were to love their neighbor as their self, and they were to hate their enemies under the old covenant. That was part of the law. But under the new covenant, Jesus said, now you can love your enemies. Why? Because you're a love being. You can bless them that curse you. You can do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. We'll get into that in more detail. Number 11, God has made you the redeemed. You are the redeemed. You are redeemed from sickness. You are redeemed from poverty and lack. You are redeemed from depression. You are redeemed from worry and stress. You are redeemed from every curse that came on mankind as a result of sin because Jesus bore your sins for you. Number 12, God has made you royalty. You are part of a royal family that will never dissipate, will never pass away. I'm talking about an eternal royal family who the head of the family is God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Man, I'm telling you, we got it made. Number 13, God has made you holy. God has made you like himself holy, pure, righteous, full of joy, full of peace, full of goodness, full of kindness. That's all part of holiness, by the way. Some people think holiness is the way you dress or talk. And if you don't talk King Jimmy Elizabeth in English, then you must not be holy. No, listen, being holy is being like God. That, that means laughing and having fun and all part of, that's all part of holiness. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number 14, God has made you his purchased and protected possession. You are special to God. And boy, that was good. You're his prized possession. Number 15, God has made you his temple. I could just go on and on, but I, we got to keep moving. Uh, number 16, God has made you the light to the world. Number 17, God has made you the salt of the earth. Number 18, God has made you an overcomer. Number 19, God has made you more than a conqueror. Number 20, God has made you physically well and whole in your body. Talking about your physical body. God has made you well, whole in your physical body. Number 21, God has made you financially independent of the world system. Those last two sometimes throw people off because if, you're, if you have sickness on your body or in your body or if you're financially uh, destitute, you're, you don't have much money, you don't have enough to make ends meet, and then you hear that God has made you 
well in your body or God has made you financially independent, you think, well, he didn't make me because look. And you go by the facts and realities rather than by the truth, which is why God has me preaching the truth and teaching the truth is so that you can take this and say, okay, if this is what God has made me, then I'm going to access it. If this is what God has made me, then I'm going to partake of it. Remember, he's made available to every person on planet earth to be saved from sin. He's actually already bore all the sins of the whole world. 2,000 years ago, Jesus bore the sins of the whole world. So everybody's righteousness is available to them if they receive it by faith, but they can't do it on their own. And, and the same way here, God has made you well in your physical body. God has made you financially independent. You can't do this on your own because this is part of God's kingdom, part of God's system. You have to access it by grace through faith. That's, that's the only way. Well, let's move on. Boy, so much good stuff here. Number 22, God has made you a soldier. You are a highly decorated, a top-notch soldier in God's army. Number 23, God has made you complete. You have everything you need because you're complete in Him. Now, your mind is not complete, your body's not complete, but you, the real you, the, the eternal being that's going to live forever because you're born again, you have been made complete. You have been perfected in Christ Jesus. All right, so that's part A of our series. Part B of this series is what God has given you. God has given you Jesus, given you Himself. I, I, I pray that you would take that statement. Now, if you were with us, we actually spent program days after days on that very statement. What does it mean that God's given you Jesus? Think about what Jesus is, who Jesus is, what Jesus has, what He can do. God gave you Jesus as a gift. He belongs to you, lives in you. You live in Him. Man, that is, when you start getting revelation, whoa, God, you gave me Jesus? Yeah, that's why it's called the gift. <laughs> that's why it's called the gift. God didn't give it to you and then take it back. No, He gave you Jesus. Number two, God has given you the same anointing that he gave Jesus. We'll talk about that more as, you, as we get into part C of the series, because if you have the same anointing, then obviously that anointing can heal people and deliver people, including yourself, but it can do it for others as well. Number three, God has given you his Zoe. His very life is inside you. Number four, God has given you a team. We found out he gave you a team. He gave you a permanent position on that team, and He even put Himself on your team. God's on your side. He's on your team. Number five, God has given you His love. Number six, God has given you the Holy Spirit. Number seven, God has given you His weapons and His armor. Number eight, God has already given you everything you need to live a happy, a fun, a fulfilled life. I love this one God has given already, 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 already. Listen, He's already given me everything I need to live a fun, happy, fulfilled life. That's why I am a happy person 24-7, 365. I have fun all the time, even if other people choose not to have fun and they're not going to be happy and they're going to be pessimistic and they're going to be downtrodden. I am going to be uppity, uppity up. Man, I am going to be lifting up Jesus. I'm going to be lifting up the Word of God. I'm going to be lifting up people with the peace of God, the love of God, the joy of God, the goodness of God, the health of God, the prosperity of God. Why? Because Jesus said, I've come that you might have life. And all of that is included in His life. Come that you might have life. And to have that life, not just barely get by. He's El Shaddai, not El Chipo. <laughs> God wants you to have an abundant life in every realm. Wow. Number nine, God has given you all of heaven's authority and the power to back it up. Number 10, God has given you nine attributes of his character. We're talking the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and self-control. God has given you all nine attributes. You have them. You can use them 24-7, 365. Number 11, God has given you the name. Number 12, God has given you the word. Number 13, God has given you the blood. Number 14, God has given you full access to His presence, to His throne, anytime you need it, anywhere you're at for anything you need. Man. 
Number 15, God has given you total freedom and liberty for you to live your life. Number 16, God has given you angels. He assigned angels to you in the beginning of your life, and you don't lose them when you get older and become an adult. Man, no, you have a, a legion. You have an, an army of angels that are assigned to you, and we looked at those verses. Number 17, God has given you a pathway to brighter tomorrows and a wonderful future. If you are not looking forward to the future, then you have the wrong uh, programming in your thinking. You need to get God's Word program. That's why we went to all the verses we did on that one. God's given you a pathway to brighter tomorrows and a wonderful future. Number 18, God has already given you citizenship in heaven. You're, you've already made it. You're in. You don't have to wait till you get to the pearly gates and see if Peter's going to be standing there letting you in. No, you're already in. Number 19, God has given you His righteousness. So you are in right standing with God because God's given you that. Number 20, God has given you health for your physical body. We talked about that. Number 21, God has given you His financial blessings and even the ability to acquire them. You even have the ability to gain wealth, to pay off mortgages, to pay off car loans, to pay off debt. You have God's ability to do that. And then number 22, which is the one we've, we've been on now for a, while, for a little while, God has given you ministers as gifts to help equip you to live the blessed life. And we were talking about this on the last program. Uh, turn back over to Ephesians 4, verse 8, said that God gave gifts to men. Talking about you and me, He gave gifts to us. And then verse 11 tells us what gifts He gave. It tells us He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. And those gifts were given for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So verse 11 tells us that God gave you five ministry gifts. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. And according to verse 12, they are to equip you so that you can work in some facet of ministry. And then by all of us working together, we build up the body of Christ and help it to be all that Jesus uh, wants it to be on the earth. So I started last program in the gift of pastor. Um, pastors, notice pastor is one of the gifts given here. Pastor is a gift from God to you and to the church. And since Jesus gave us the gift of pastor, then we need it. We already looked at some scriptures that show us a pastor is a shepherd of the sheep. Uh, a pastor is a, a, a shepherd of the flock, which is people, of course. Now look over at Matthew. Let's look at a couple of verses here. We are out of time already. But Matthew 9, 35 and 36, this is where the same Greek word for pastor that we're looking at here in Ephesians 4 is used in this passage in Matthew 9. It says in verse 35, Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Notice they were fainted, so that means they were not strong. They were not healthy. Were they not doing good physically, mentally, emotionally, and socially and all that? They fainted. They were scattered, so there wasn't strength. When you're together, there's strength, but not being scattered. But it says why? They were sheep having, as sheep, having no shepherd. So what happens when, when sheep don't have a shepherd? They end up scattered and then they get attacked and they're weak and so forth. So this passage is showing us because this word shepherd is the same one that we're looking at here in Ephesians 4.11 that God gave us a pastor. Same Greek word used here. Um, it's used, that same Greek word is used again in John chapter 10, verse 11. We'll look at one more verse here before we have to close. We'll pick back up next program. Uh, Jesus said in John 10, 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. So this is the same Greek word that we see here in Ephesians 4, 11, translated pastor. So now this lets us know that the pastor is good. Now there are Pastors may be just like in any profession, there's pastors just like there may be an apostle, prophet, evangelist, or teacher that's not good. So there's pastors probably that aren't good, I'm sure, but uh, the ones that I know are good because they're giving their lives. This is what verse 11 says here in John 10, they give their lives for the sheep. Pastors give their lives for the sheep. Just like apostles, prophets, evangelists, and teachers, all five ministry gifts are supposed to do the same thing. We give our lives for the sheep. That's why I spend so much time. Now, I'm not a pastor. We're talking about the pastoral gift here, but somebody came up to me one time 
and said, man, you ought to be a pastor. And I said, why? He said, you have the heart of a pastor. And I, I said, what do you mean by that? And they said, well, you love the sheep. You take time. You talk to us. You pray for us. You love on us. You, you act like we, we matter in your life. That you, you don't act like you're better than us. You know, you have a pastor's heart. And I knew what they meant. I took it as a compliment, but I took it as an indictment against the body of Christ about the other gifts because if he's saying that, then he must think that an evangelist and an apostle and a prophet and a teacher don't have a heart like a pastor does and don't love the sheep like a pastor does. But you know what? I love the sheep as much as any pastor. I don't care who you are. I love, I love your sheep as much. God so loved the world that's who I love, which happens to be your sheep and everybody else's sheep. And you and I, we should be laying down our lives for the sheep. As ministers, we ought to be loving the sheep. I don't care if you're an evangelist. I don't care if you're a teacher, a prophet, an apostle. You ought to love people as much as a pastor does. Don't let that be a bad indictment against you. All right, we're out of time. We'll pick up here next program. Thank you for joining us. Um, it, it, we're just going to keep going on and on and on and helping people get the truth that makes them free. But God's given you a lot of stuff so you can live an abundant life. And one of those things is the gift of pastor. We'll pick it up next program. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Until next time, have a wonderful Jesus-filled day. God bless you. If you would like to schedule Larry Hutton to speak at your church, event, or conference, go to LarryHutton.org and choose Contact Us from the menu bar or call 1-888-887-WORD. Jesus paid an incredible price for us when he laid down his life, took on our sin, died on the cross, and descended into hell. But then he was raised up again in glory, so all who believe on him could become just like him, walking in love, joy, and peace, doing his mighty works, winning souls, and making disciples. The world constantly tries to limit you, but you need not go through life believing that you are what circumstances, background, or failures have forced you to be. Who does God say He has made you to be? What does God say He has given you? What does God say you were able to do? Larry Hutton goes to the Bible to reveal all that God has done so you will be able to fulfill your divine purpose and destiny on the earth. In Christ, you have all things to build you up into the believer that God designed you to be. To order, he was, I am. Go to LarryHutton.org or call 888-887-WORD. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org, or you can call 888-887-WORD.